welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast. I am your host, Susie Hunter, and happy Wednesday, everyone. It is Wednesday, December 20th, um, 2023, these final days of 2023. And we've got we've got a cool show for you. It's it's going to be a chaotic show, guys. It's going to be chaotic. We have some very special guests, including Howler, if you're watching us on YouTube. <laughs> including Howler, maybe Dinger, maybe the Cleveland Guardians hot dogs, or maybe just a couple of guys from their communication department. This is either going to be the best show or the worst show ever. No, it'll be fun. We're going to have a really good time. Um, we'll introduce them in a couple of minutes. But first... Um, We'll get into like the little bit of uh, news that we have going on in our world. Uh, the Rockies apparently are signing Chance Adams again, according to John Heyman. We don't have a confirmation of this yet. Um, and of course, John Heyman is not allowed to talk about the Rockies anymore after what he said about Todd Helton, because it's clear he doesn't know anything about the Rockies, probably doesn't know anything about baseball. I will die on that hill. Um, and of course, also Ben Verlander trending on Twitter right now for all of the usual reasons. No, he's clowning right now. Of course, he's always like clowning over Shohei Otani, uh, but he came out with his worst baseball take of all time. Um, and that is he says that Shohei Otani is the most important signing the Dodgers have ever had. There's so much wrong with that. I mean, yes, he is an important signing, but um, sir, did you forget about Jackie Robinson? like the most important signing of any team of all time. Did you forget? He forgot. Or like, if that's really his opinion, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know. All right, listen, uh, Tiff, we should show the pictures of our very special guests joining us today. Um, we've got Jeremy Fedor of the Cleveland Guardians. And we've got Brian Havrilla also of the Cleveland Guardians. They um, are in charge of how... They're in charge of, like, what we know about the Guardians. I don't know. How else do you describe a communication department? Um, uh, this is Brian. If you're watching us on YouTube, he um, dropped his Chipotle. These are the pictures they sent me to use, by the way. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> They're a riot. They'll be joining us in just a moment. But before that, we have to shout out our friends at Circa Sports Book Circa Sports Book, one word, because this show would not be possible without them. Listen, Circa Resort and Casino is Vegas's first ever adults only casino resort. Saves time on checking IDs, saves time on nonsense. I don't have to worry about dropping F bombs because there are no kids there. Uh, but it's the world's largest sports book. It's a three story stadium style sports book. Uh, the TV, the big screen is so big, it takes 10 people to run it. That's how you know it's uh, the real deal. So tons of uh, tons of seating, tons of food options you can get there. VIP seating, too, if you want to take advantage of that. They have a 7,000-square-foot casino with two different levels. And, of course, Stadium Swim, the crown jewel of Vegas, I think, because this is a 4,000-person capacity pool swimming area. A huge 143-foot LED screen open 365 days a year you don't have to worry about you know pool season in vegas because it's always pool season at circa and they've got swim up bars cabanas super cabanas so book a stay there book a stay maybe you're heading out to vegas for broncos raiders abs nights or maybe something else but when you book that stay use code dnvr20 for 20 percent off and of course you can enjoy the wonders of circa sports book in your phone because Circa Sportsbook is available in Colorado. Download the app right now. You can find that app at circasports.com. But remember, bets can only be made while physically located in the state of Colorado. You must be 21 or older. All rights reserved. Circa Sportsbook Colorado encourages you to gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-GAMBLER or visit problemgambling.com. Org. And uh, let's also shout out our friends at Breck Brew, our OG beer kings and queens. Uh, we love Breck Brew because they have been making local beer right here in Colorado for for decades, for 33 years. Is it still 33 years? I feel like it's got to be 34 now at this point. I feel like I've been saying 33 years for the past two years. But they've been doing this for decades. They are making it with 100% renewable energy. Um, and, of course, don't forget uh, the Christmas ale is the beer of the month here at the bar. 
So you can get a pint of that for six bucks. And it's a new recipe too. All right. I've got these guys blowing up my texts right now. I don't know why. So let's bring them in again. We have some gentlemen from the Cleveland Guardians organization. They are part of the communication department. We're going to air horn them up, but we've got uh, Brian Havrilla here on my right and Jeremy Fedor here on my left. Uh, guys, welcome in. How are you doing? Okay. Cool. I'm fine. That's <laughs> great. This is it's tremendous. Great, great to see you, Susie. Um, it's, it's been too long. It really has been. I saw you guys, of course, when the Rockies played in Cleveland. That was, you know, at first it was a fun trip because one of our favorite young starters is an Ohio native and grew up going to Cleveland Guardian or, you know, Cleveland baseball games from the previous name. Um, and then, of course, we left there with a very injured Armand Marquez. So uh, we've got some mixed memories from our last trip. Um, and also, I, you know, was hanging out with you guys. So definitely a real mixed bag. To be honest, all I remember is hanging out with, with you and Brian. Um, you know, when you sit through almost 80 games, they tend to blur together at home. But uh, I don't know. Do we, what was that three game series? Did we, what, what was the end result? I don't remember. Uh, you know what? I actually don't remember either because, like, the big takeaway was our recently reinstated Herman Marquez, like, one of our freaking aces, uh, went right back on the IL immediately and uh, stayed on there because he needed Tommy John. He totally Ooh. wrecked his UCL right there in Cleveland. Oof. Yeah, it, it was, was uh, uh, and again, it was, yeah, it was a long, long season for us. I mean, a lot of good highs. Good Josh Naylor went wild for a while, hitting home runs, and, uh, I don't know if he hit any against the Rockies, but um, you know, it's one of those seasons for us too, where it just injuries kept happening, and uh, uh, so you, you pick out the the highlights of the season, you know, both pers personal and stuff on the field. So it was a uh, got another season watching Hosey. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I don't know how how people in Colorado uh, love Hosey, but I'm sure they do. How do you, how do you not love Jose Ramirez and the way he plays the game of baseball? Hosey was his nickname, actually. This is um, new information. Uh, sweet, sweet, sweet King and Goat also work. Um, I've heard Sweet King. Yeah, he's, yeah our, our sweet our beloved school. prince. We, we love him um, in Cleveland. And <laughs> um, everyone else should love him, too. But listen, I mean, I am a big fan of Jose Ramirez in terms of his fighting career versus Tim Anderson. I don't know if you guys are allowed to talk about that or not, but I will say it was um, a pretty funny moment on social media in the days that followed that. Yeah, and you know, I, I guess I can't say we we were there, um, and that's one of those moments where again, I'm more of the utility guy of the department. I'm like the David Fry. I'll play first base, you know, catcher. Actually, my hair plug just fell. Didn't um, <laughs> it's already chaos. Uh, did Fry pitch this year too? I think for us, I, that's what kind of guy I am. So when Brian needs a spell, I'll I'll go on Twitter and stuff. But I'm pretty sure Brian, you were working that game. Yeah, I was. I was there. I was actually. Uh... Saying hi to a friend, I was in like the, the center field area. Um, one of our other interns at the time came down with me and, you know, saying hi to one of my friends down there. Um, and all of a sudden, like, the stadium started to like, people were like gasping and like, you know, kind of what was happening. Like, I, I didn't, I couldn't see it all happening initially. Like, obviously we knew like Jose got a double and then all of a sudden like chaos is happening on the field. So we... We honest, uh, we we hightailed it back to the press box and uh, kind of caught caught it all from that that point of view. But um, yeah, it was one of those things like you kind of don't don't forget where you were. It was uh, it was chaos. I will always remember where I was when I found out. Um, all right, so I'm sure running social media for a baseball team, any professional team, comes with a lot of a lot of highs, a lot of lows, a lot of weird replies to your tweets what is the weirdest thing you guys have ever seen in the replies to a cleveland guardians tweet weirdest reply uh oof. and we've had some surprise stuff like brian's connection to noah khan that was all organic i think wasn't it yeah so i'm trying to think like weirdest replies it's like there should be one that sticks out but um you know if you've if you've been on twitter uh long enough you you know that but it's kind of a hellscape. So there, there, um, there used to be those those hives. Someone made like these videos after we would win games, and it was just like chaos in a thirty second video of like loud noises and like 
like overexposed photos. So, so think of when, when TCU was really good a couple of years ago in football, um, they had those actually might've been like last year, those like horn frog, like video recaps whenever they'd win a game. And it was just like the cesspool of like internet content. Um, and that was like somebody within our fan base was doing that. She's out might've been my first year, 2018, 2019. Um, so they were doing it years before it was cool. Um, yeah, those those definitely yeah. stick out. Do you but there's a lot of creative seen? stuff too. Yeah, you know, there's people put stuff out, and it's just like, how did someone think of that? Or you know, they have, they have hammy photos where uh, you know you, they use this catchphrase that you got. He's about to say ball game so loud on you or something like that. Like, there's some really creative stuff people come up with. Do you guys ever see these replies and like these creative ones and think like, oh, we should hire them? Um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I've definitely gotten some ideas from people before. Um, I, I crowdsource from time to time. Crowdsource. Okay. Got it. So the Cleveland guardians, Twitter account steals content. Next question. Um, yes. <laughs> for legal purposes, on the record. A joke. On, on the, the record. record, on the record. Um, you guys do have a lot of really good bits that you do. What's your favorite ongoing social media bit? Ooh. I don't, uh, we, we're, we're kind of in the brainstorming process to begin a couple new ones. Um, so I don't know that we, that I have like a favorite one we're, we're currently doing, but there, there was a season we hid, um, we hit Nicholas Cage in like 50, 50 or so lineup graphics, um, like just very like opaque, transparent. Um, and there were like one or two people throughout the season that kind of like would notice it here and there. But other than that, it went pretty unnoticed. And then a random day in like January, we just like revealed, hey, we hit this in like 53 lineup graphics. So it was like this big, like people were going on scavenger hunts trying to find, you know, Nicolas Cage's face and all these different lineup didn't, graphics. Didn't we hide the Grimace as well? Yeah, we, oh yeah, yeah. So. Big news this year, Susie. You were you were obviously our favorite guest that we had in Cleveland this year. Um, our second favorite guest. Um, we had Grimace come to throw out a first pitch. Yeah. Um, which was just amazing. He's he's everything you want him to be, but somehow more. Um, so yeah, we it, it was funny because you know, you had a bunch of grown adults that day that were just super excited to go to work because they were going to get to meet Grimace and take a picture with Grimace. Um, but yeah, we hid his face in a couple couple lineup graphics. I think it was to kind of like tease that we were going to do it, and then you know he just shows up one day, and yeah, it was uh that was probably my favorite day of work this year. One thing we did too during the COVID season, trying just to you know have some fun where we could, was obviously one of the most memorable parts of our history is a ten cent beer night, and uh, you know since no one was allowed into the ballpark for for COVID in twenty twenty. We ended up making a graphic that said, "Hey, tonight is ten cent beer night." You know, so fans in attendance can. Uh, we had a graphic Brian made, and um, you know, I think it got some uh, got some laughs in a time where you know we needed some lighthearted humor. And and I, I, I mean, I don't know if we can technically say we had another you know ten cent beer night, but we had a tweet that said we did. So uh, uh, that one we, went we off without a hitch too. Night. Um, is yeah. 10 cent beer night like the kind of thing where like when I know like being from Philly, like when people are trying to say that Philly fans are trash, they're like, oh, you guys threw snowballs at Santa. No one wants to acknowledge that Santa deserved it. But like, is that the kind of thing that you guys get all the time when people are trying to roast you? No, I think 10 cent beer. I mean, there's T-shirts. You'll see them at ball games. People wear it's It's probably I think most of the Cleveland T-shirt uh, companies have a 10 cent beer night. It's one of those things that is more just like comical like that was something that you know went off and then you know that one that, that got famous didn't didn't end well but then they had one after uh, i think a few weeks after um and i guess it wasn't too uncommon of a uh a promotion back then as well so um yeah that, there's there's no um that no most of the roasting comes i think when people try to make fun of like the river catching fire or you know those those things which again uh when you're it's one of those things where it's just You've heard it a thousand times before. It, it, it rolls off your back. I mean, Susie, so you you are one of the greatest Cleveland defenders I've ever met in my life. Thank um, you. And given, given that you're not even from here, like, we, we genuinely appreciate people like that. Like, <laughs> Cleveland is not as bad as everyone, you know, makes it out to be. 
most people Same. come to Cleveland when they, they yeah when they when they leave like oh that was a lot cooler than I I thought it would be and there's a lot going on you get the big town amenities big city stuff you get less traffic the cost of living's great beer's cheap um, you know you have all three major sports teams and uh, yeah I, I I mean again we're biased because we're from here but you you know you've been here you're not from here and you will you know fly your Cleveland flag and uh, especially with, you know you love the hot dogs you love slider and I think one of the best ballparks in baseball too. To me, not that mascots talk, but like Slider has never made a fuss over me like the hot dogs do. I'm just we saying. Talk, I'm just yeah, saying. We'll, someone, we'll... someone with Slider actually come to think of it. A couple of years ago, someone got a piece of like his tail fur at spring training, and it actually went up on eBay. And I don't know how much it went for, but someone sold a piece of like tighter Slider's fur that got caught like in a seat or something so the dedication to uh to mascots is is something um like a, like a lucky rabbit's foot kind of thing like that well, it was just the fur though it wasn't even like like if you rip the fur off this foot? thing and then like yeah it, it somehow got caught because i don't know how they would have gotten it otherwise so yeah slider's a that's an interesting cat yeah Susie, Susie has that out of frame in her studio right now she's the one that bought it <laughs> one who bought it um uh, before uh before we take a quick ad break um i do i have a follow-up question about the grimace appearance um i didn't see grimace at other ballparks uh why did grimace end up um throwing out a first pitch at a cleveland guardians game um, a great corporate so we, sponsorship team they they worked their connections and and got grimace you know it was the time of the grimace shake and um you know, they said, hey, do you want the Grimace to come to the ballpark? And what we're trying to get more, you know, big names to throw out a first pitch. And what's a bigger name than the Grimace? Like everyone else after that, it was kind of like, well, are they at Grimace level? Not quite. But we had some people come close to Grimace level this year, but no one reaches that. I mean, kid, kids, plug your ears. Um, the real reason. So like, yeah, we, we invited him on social and um, our, our CP team reached out to McDonald's because they're a partner. Um, and there was... Like on this side of the country, there is one grimace suit, like mascot suit, um, and it just so happened to be like in Ohio, like in the area. So that's that's kind of how that that came to fruition. But we had a couple other like people from different teams and their social departments like reach out to us, like jealous, like how did you guys get grimace out? And we're like, what can we say? Um, that's amazing. Um, I, I, I see your power and I respect it. And uh, it, it was incredible. It was such a great, it was a great first pitch too. Definitely not the worst first pitch I saw at um, a Cleveland Guardians game this season. Um, all right, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna shout out some people. So let's get these guys out of here because uh, they don't want to be here for ad breaks. Guys, Breckenridge does um they're the official they have the official bourbon or they have the official whiskey of the denver broncos we love our friends at uh at Preck distillery though listen they have a new vodka commemorating the first white alternate broncos helmets it's called the broncos blizzard oh and it'll match the um white end zone that we'll see i think the next broncos home game so that'll be fun but yeah, Breckenridge Distillery, award-winning spirits, an immersive guest experience. Uh, you can eat at their award-winning restaurant. You can enjoy a bunch of show-stopping cocktails. Uh, you can learn about their award-winning spirits, too. And uh, listen, if you are not a whiskey gal or a whiskey guy, uh, maybe you want something that's already made for you. Reiki seltzers are made with Breck spirits. They are some of the best seltzers I've ever had. We're obsessed with them. We are drinking them all the time here at the bar. But you can try them at the bar, too. You can try them at our Broncos tailgates. We've still got a couple left. Make sure you grab a taster. And uh, Breckenridge Distillery products available in all 50 states. Shop your local retailer or visit BreckenridgeDistillery.com for home delivery of Breckenridge spirits. I pray anywhere. Um, and listen, uh, Shady Rays, you can bring them anywhere. And you don't have to worry about breaking them or losing them because they will replace them if Something horrible happens to them. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Uh, Shady Ray is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that is just as good as any of the expensive designer pairs I've worn. 
That's for sure. And they're durable, clear optics, polarized. They are the real deal. Uh, you can shop their whole collection online at ShadyRays.com or head to the Park Meadows Mall. They've got a store. All, all things Shady Rays you can find at the Park Meadows Mall. But this is an exclusive deal for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code DNVR for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. So try for yourself. The Shades rated five stars by more than 250,000 people. All right, let's bring Brian and Jeremy back. Welcome back, gentlemen. Uh, Jeremy, you're also the team historian. Is that correct? Yes. I cool. That very emphatically. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, – it's it's a wonderful job. I get to do awesome stuff. So actually, just uh, last month, uh, Brian and I, we got to drive out to Cooperstown and uh, drop off a few items for a, a nice little loan. So that's about a six-and-a-half-hour drive from Cleveland to Cooperstown. And we're lucky to be that close. I can't imagine what the drive is from Denver – but uh, Brian wouldn't remember he slept most of the way. So a little sleepy guy in the back seat while I'm, you know, I, I had passengers. I couldn't sleep, obviously, but we made it in a good amount of time and spent the rest of the time, um, you know, making content as the social world would would call it. So Brian is currently editing those videos and uh, it was awesome. I mean, Cooperstown in the summer is cool because it's crowded and there's a lot of energy going on. Cooperstown in the winter is like, the flip side there were i don't know maybe we passed like 15 people in the hall that day it was pretty uh pretty much had the run of the, of the show to ourselves so if you're looking to go to cooperstown get out there. there's a lot of great cleveland artifacts among them is john adams drum which we dropped off uh on a loan there and and the bat that babe ruth leaned on uh, on that famous photo from that's actually bob feller's bat but yeah a lot of rich history in cleveland uh, baseball as well as, as other aspects, because again, as we all know, Cleveland's just an absolutely wonderful place to be. I do know that. Uh, Susie, um, J Jeremy failed to mention that he does host a podcast too. Um, and I, I have to just go on the record here to say that this, your podcast is so much more exciting. I actually use Jeremy's to fall asleep at night. Um, so during my, my Spotify wrapped, he was my number one podcast because I use it to sleep. I do have that that great like NPR voice when I'm recording stuff. You know, you really gotta like just get your tea and just get ready for it, and um, you know, just let it like it's like a velvet. Yeah, like I'm I'm yelling a little bit here just because I'm excited. You know, I'm just excited. I have my my TikTok light and everything. I mean, I might just break out into a dance. Um, big shout out to our friend Janet that's been watching us. By the way, she was texting us, so I just wanted to to do that. She, yeah, she, uh, and sh shout out to my mom too. She said she was going to tune in. Um, J Janet was actually, uh, she shot us a message, um, and corrected Jeremy because he was calling it the M or the grimace. Um, it's, it's just grimace. So Jer Jeremy's probably one of those people that calls it the MLB too. Worst people, you know. I can't hear you, Susie. I can't hear you. Where'd you go? Susie. Am I back? On mute. No, you're back. We're back. I'm back. We're back. We're back. Um, I was so just back. saying, listen, our TIFF producer just added, uh, don't be shy, Janet. Hop in the comments. Follow me back on Instagram. <laughs> uh, a little backstory, guys. Before we went on air, of course, I'm talking to these guys in a group chat for the whole morning, and they're like, Janet, you need to follow Janet. And I'm like, I've never heard of Janet. Uh, so I, I find, I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go follow her on Instagram. She's not even following me. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And I don't think I ever will. She's just one of our former interns, an absolute superstar to, uh, to have worked with and um, just, a, just a heck of a person. So she's doing great things in the sports world and uh, just wanted to gas her up a little bit. Okay, that's amazing. And um, can we? Can we? Can you tell me where she works now? I I rely. I don't know. I don't know what the rules are anymore. You know what? If Janet wants to pop on and tell us what she's up to, if Janet wants to join the podcast, obviously there's no rules. Anything goes. Um, I am surprised. I know when we were prepping for the show, uh, Jeremy, you seemed really excited to be able to curse on the show. Yet we've heard <laughs> exactly zero f bombs. What's going on? Why did you lie to me? <laughs> 
I was just testing the waters. I, I Brian's mom's watching. Mrs. Havrilla is an absolute angel. So I know I don't want to, you know, say yeah, anything. It's the Christmas, Christmas season, season too. It's, it's it's you got to be. Santa's watching. We're we're days away uh, from Santa coming to town, and I'm not gonna be jeopardize. Out is what I'll write uh, down. Yeah, it's it's kind of amazing because Jeremy has like the worst, and I'm seeing lines from like my. Yeah, look at that. This guy needs some like blinds or something. What are you recording I need, in the closet? I need a TikTok <laughs> light. Um, I'm gonna have to open my wow. blinds. I just I'm scared to move. Um, Jeremy look, has like one of I got the blinds worst. on my face. <laughs> has one of the. I'm gonna open these. Jer wow, Jeremy what a disaster! Have you ever had a guest just get up in the middle of the show to like finagle their blinds? It's called prep work. It's called, you know, being ready for the occasion. Now he's gone. He might have dropped his phone. Or... He's... <laughs> Did we lose Brian? Is he, is he gone? I'm he's here. muted again. Oh. oh he's it's back. just like such a boy apartment where you just don't have curtains. Nope. No curtains. Nope. No curtains. No curtains. I'm back. I'm back. Um, Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's good to see you. you. It's good to be here. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Oh. <laughs> um, Frederick, the two best of friends. Do you know Frederick, or is Frederick just like catching on? Uh, good old Freddie Brown. He's uh, he's one of he's one of the clubbies for the Guardians. Um, one of the best in the business. Shout out Freddie. All right, Freddie. Yes, I love people who love Cleveland. <laughs> Anyone, if you're in the chat right now, just drop your favorite thing about Cleveland. Um, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Um, you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, of course, Jeremy, a historian. Um, did you know that Cleveland is named after a dude from Connecticut? Yeah, yeah, yeah Moses Cleveland. And uh, uh, came over, didn't really stay long, though. He was, I think it was just like a, like a few weeks. and then Set, he, set up shop he, and then booked it out of there. Biggest mistake yeah. of his life. He's got a, he's got a statue. Um, used to be at Public Square. I come to think of it, I don't know where they've moved it. Public Square has gone through extensive renovations. And uh, I don't think, it might, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. He's got a statue somewhere. Because you watch Major League, at one point they show that statue. And he's got a little batting helmet and, and all that. But yeah, so... Um, the connections, the connections there. Last, um, <laughs> I just want to pop in and say that there is actually no Janet. Her name is Janie. Um, we are just, Aww. I am currently surrounded by the most chaotic men I've ever met in my life. Uh, <laughs> Janie, great to have you in here. Um, you're welcome on the show anytime. If you want to talk about the abuse you went through with these guys. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. Uh, K Carter in the chat. My favorite thing about Cleveland is the quiet hotel bar. Is that the yep. name of a hotel? So me being in my, my late thirties, I enjoy a post game. You know, if we're going to go out for a post game beer or something like that, there is a nice hotel bar, um, beyond the parking garage that is never too crowded, never too loud. It's the perfect place to go. You're not bumping into people. It's having a nice, uh, Beer Carter used to get upset because I didn't invite him most of the time. He's also a a, a former intern um, with us, so um, good to see you, Martin. And um, but yeah, it's a very nice, very nice. I think the best bars are the bars that aren't too loud. You know, you got you want to have conversation unless you're with Brian, then you want to watch TV and just pretend that you know you're by yourself. Um, but yeah, great, great bar, great atmosphere, quiet, not too crowded and good prices. Wow, wow, what a what a beautiful thing. I've never been to a quiet bar because once I get to a bar, it's no longer quiet. You know are we gonna see, talk about- I, When you were doing your reads before, what, when are we getting the invite to the DNVR uh, bar? Or I've got a guest room for y'all. Um, I will I will hook you guys up at the bar. So when Cleveland plays in Colorado next year, you guys should just come out here, hang out at the bar. You can be on the show in person. Uh, it'll be a real good time. Okay. Are we, now, we showed Brian's picture of when he spilled Chipotle all over the concourse. Is anyone going to talk about when you spilled your soup at press dining and it made an absolute mess? I think I'm, I don't know where I was for that. I think I was there. You, Brian, you want? Is there, or was I not? Tiff, pull up that picture. We actually do have that prepared. Good. Brian, I, you I tell the tale while we pull up this picture. 
Yeah, so we, I mean, for, for those tuning in that have not been in a, in a press box, um, there's an area called press dining. Um, it's like a cafeteria. Um, and we have a pretty regular, like, spread um, day to day. Like, there's, you know, a couple things that, that vary every day, but usually there are some hot dogs, hamburgers, soup options, like a typical, like, day to day um, schedule of food. Um, but while Susie was there, she uh, decided to indulge in the soup section. Um, I, Susie, do you remember what soup it was? What kind of soup? Oh, that's definitely chicken noodle or wedding yeah. soup. One of the two. Um, but yeah, it was we're, so cold uh, in Cleveland. So like it was definitely like soup weather. I just like needed any hot liquid I could get. But as you can see from the picture, if you're watching us live on YouTube, um, I spilled the soup. Yeah. So she, she, you know, you can you can help yourself to, you know, however many helpings of, of whatever foods out there. Um, but Susie wanted to try to fit it all in one bowl. Um, so she, she, of course, overfilled it and spilled everywhere. They had to get out the, uh, the caution floor is wet sign. So they didn't have a lawsuit on their hands all because of Susie. She got, she got ambitious with the soup. That's pretty embarrassing for me. Um, especially because you guys are definitely a group of people that if any slip up happens, oh, it's all over. You guys will remember it forever. Never forget. I did issue an official apology. I did. I issued an official, like a notepad apology yeah. on mm -hmm. Twitter. I'll read that. Um, I need to come clean. It was me. I spilled the soup in the Cleveland Guardians press dining room. It wasn't a lot of soup, but it was enough to cause a scene. I deeply regret overfilling my soup bowl. I will learn from this mistake, and I hope we can all move past this egregious error. To the people of Cleveland, I hope you accept this apology. Um, clearly, we have not moved past this egregious error, and no one has accepted my apology. Never, never forget. Um, yeah, Susie actually spelled that out pretty well. Um, we, we have the kind of environment in Cleveland that if you mess up one time, uh, no one will ever let you forget. So well, it's just amongst um, us friends. Yeah, we uh, we like to have fun. And uh, like I said, Brian spilled that Chipotle three years ago, and it's still a uh, <laughs> a topic of conversation. So uh, I like to have a little fun with each other. You know, it's it's a good uh, good vibe we have. That uh, you know, if if uh, keeps us on our toes, you get a little have a little fun, and uh, you, know, you do it because you care. Yeah. Um. Speaking of you guys, you guys definitely have a lot of fun. Um. Uh, Brian, can you show us the the sweater you're wearing? Oh yeah. And maybe tell so, us about who you're wearing. Okay. Yeah. So before I do that, the, the backstory of the, the relationship between Jeremy and I is kind of like the Jim and Dwight office relationship, um, where we kind of just bully each other incessantly. Um, and it's the whole point is to kind of remain one step ahead of the other person. At least that's what I try to do. Um, so whenever, you know, a prank happens, I'm, I'm ready with, you know, my next two. Um, so this could come in the form of like, like the one year anniversary of me spilling my Chipotle bowl. Jeremy bought a cake, um, I had that picture printed on it. Um, we had a dress like Jeremy day this year where I got was weird in our, in, yeah, in our department. I, I showed up, uh, I showed up and everyone's wearing cardigans and stuff and I just, didn't think about it too much and then uh and then it got it got not carried away but uh there were some some outfits that uh really hit the nail on the head in terms of my my personality a couple bald caps jeremy show us your head bald. No, if you're watching us on youtube there's nothing there there's nothing there nothing. um so yeah so last year for work about this time we had a like it was like a award ceremony or some, some HR thing, but they're like, yeah, wear your ugliest Christmas sweater. So, you know, me being the, the person that I am, um, I had this, it's, it's a little beat up at this point because all the stickies came off and the washing machine. Ironically, I have one of them uh, floating around in my dryer that will remain there forever. It's stuck to it. I can't get it off. And what the it I'm referring to is, is little Jeremy heads. Um, you can see there, this one, this one's a little ripped, but yeah, one of these, one of these heads is floating around in my dryer. Um, but we call him egghead cause he's bald, uh, some snowflakes cause you know, it's seasonal. Um, yeah, here's a, here's a bigger version of the face. I'm trying to center it in the camera there, but, um, I mean, that is, that yeah, is a presence. Ugly. Yeah, this is the, uh, the 
ugliest Christmas sweater I own. So. Oh my Which, gosh. Yeah, I think goes to show how uh you know we like to laugh at ourselves and uh it's it's a uh I don't know I'm, I like the I like the. I mess up a lot, so you know. There's there's a picture. I don't know if Brian ever sent it to you as well. Where I'm, I may have announced the wrong pitcher warming up during a a, a game, and uh, ended up having to retract that, and, and then sat underneath the uh, the desk for a while with my my face buried in my hands because usually it's not my uh, my gig. But like I said, I'm a utility guy. When something needs to be done, I like to help out and. I forget it was towards the end of the season and someone told me someone was warming up and uh yeah it just now that picture lives on forever as you know when someone does something that that can get sent around and you know i owned it i i uh admit that i messed up so uh it's not the first time it won't be the last time Susie, I, I yeah the sun too bright for you brian still... i see look yeah, at the sun in his is, eyes it's like the a worst spot i could have said I, Absolutely. I, what there are so many better I spots, mean, but I'm not moving. What were you asking like, me? What, what was I asking you? Yeah, you were just asking me, or you were saying something oh, I, to me. I just, I just sent the picture of Jeremy under the desk. Um, the one, oh. year, one year anniversary of that. Well, the one year anniversary of that, I had that printed on a T-shirt and I wore that. Oh that. my gosh! All right. Well, I'm gonna, we're gonna work to get this um, on our show as soon as possible. Yes, uh, I'm gonna send this to our super producer Tiff, who is gonna work on the fly. Um, oh, cool! My wife. Oh, wow! This is. I mean, this is definitely a picture. This is definitely a picture of disappointment. I can't wait till you guys see it. Um, uh, yeah, all right. yeah. You guys have some nicknames and stuff. Um, I I want to know, um, Jeremy. Does Brian have any nicknames, and what are what are their origins? So I'd like to know the, he spells I'd his like name. To know the origins too. <laughs> So the, he spells his name B B R Y A N. As much as he wants to deny it, he's a Brian with a Y. Um, his, his Twitter handle will not say that, but it's Brian with a Y. And also, everyone uh, affectionately refers to him as Beans. So that's that's just the nickname. It's just kind of um, I don't know if there is an origin story to it. He's just uh, he's just Beans. You know, he looks like a guy whose name would be Beans, and it uh, it kind of sticks. And everyone uh. Everyone that is friends with Brian, it's it's um, you know it's it's made its rounds and and uh, yeah. So if you ever get an email or a text from like, hey, me and Beans are you know going somewhere, that's that's Brian with a Y, and uh, that's that's the one that really sticks. I'm sure I've called him a lot of things. Um, no sleepy boy, like I said in the back of the car, he's a little little sleepy guy, or uh, you know. I'll, um, <laughs> Brian, my question for you, do you feel harassed at work? Oh, constantly. Um, <laughs> but it, the thing about Jeremy is if he doesn't uh, doesn't harass you, he doesn't actually like you. So, like, it's this weird, sick, twisted middle child syndrome thing he's got going on where that's, that's his way of showing affection. Um, Jer Jeremy actually shot me on, on the topic of beans. He shot me a text uh, the other day. His his son, so his kids call me Mr. Beans. Um, <laughs> Mr. So polite, by the way. Yeah, Mr. Beans. Uh, but his son, his his son asked uh, asked Jeremy the other day if I could beat Uncle Beans. So Uncle Beans. Yeah, Jer Jeremy and I are, are now uh, are now brothers. Family. Oh, you know what? I I love that. By the way, Tiff, do we have that picture ready to show our YouTube channel? Um, here we're we're popping this up right now. Jeremy hiding under a desk after tweeting the wrong pitcher was warming up. What a devastating moment for the Cleveland Guardians organization. Probably the worst thing that's ever happened. Wow. It's amazing you guys have moved through this and are here to talk about it today. I should get a picture that captures the, uh, the emotion of the moment. And uh, like I said, I'm a perfectionist. And uh, that, uh, that was not a perfect moment by any means. But, uh, you know, I was trying to help. And uh, I'm not, nobody's perfect. So that, that's, that's a picture that sticks around. And uh, well, it's a good memory. A good memory. A good memory of a, of a hard lesson learned. That's how you learn, you know, you make mistakes and, uh, and then that's just, that's just one of many. 
Um, fascinating, fascinating. I love how this turned from just goofing around to like really like an after school special where we're all learning a lesson together. Um, I do want to ask, all right, I've got some questions. You guys have the honor of working with some of the most famous hot dogs in the biz. Uh, what is it like working alongside such incredible celebrities? Oh, they're great. My, uh, my kids have both been the mini hot dogs and kids fun day. So they really enjoy that. They they enjoy their their time throwing T-shirts out and dancing at the you know the the hot slider and the dogs. They have their little concerts every Sunday, which are great family events. If you're in the Cleveland area and are looking for something to do on a Sunday morning, uh, kids fun days are are by far some of the best events in Cleveland. Um, but no, they're phenomenal. They're always up to hijinks. They're always you know whether it's throwing basketballs from the what was it the top level into the hoop on the field at one point. Uh, they're they're up into all kinds of hijinks, and it's there's never a dull moment with them. Seriously, yeah, I mean, Susie, I for for those watching, um, I had the the uh, personal experience of filming Susie embracing the hot dogs for the first time when she saw them in Cleveland this year. Um, it was a, it was a pretty special moment. Uh, she was she was almost in tears, and they're they're hot dogs, but they were probably crying too. I don't know. It's it's hard for them to show emotion. What a special, uh, what a special picture we got there. The picture, the first time I ever came to uh, Cleveland, the hot dogs actually slid into my DMs saying like, hey, we want to greet you when you get here because I was on that big road trip. I was going to all the stadiums. And uh, of course, like, I mean, I was paying for all these tickets myself. So I was all the way up in the nosebleeds. I was as high up as you could be. And I told them where I was sitting and they came up and it was very hard for them to walk up all those stairs. But they came up. People were losing their minds they're, they were just absolutely going crazy watching these hot dogs climb up these stairs all to like give a 30 year old woman a gift bag. I mean, if, if the Beatles were hot dogs, you know, it's like the same thing, the way Beatle mania took off. It's hot dog mania with these. I mean, everyone, you can't, if it's, if it's a, a, you know, a crowded Saturday night, it's tough for them to get around the ballpark because everyone wants to take their photo and high five them. And uh, you know, they are, they are Cleveland celebrities. Celebrities yeah, really, nationally to me. It's, it's really like working with like the coolest people you've ever met. You, you walk down the hallway and you run into mustard and you're like, you, your heart's fluttering a little bit. Uh, you, get, you get starstruck every time you see him. It's great. Starstruck. Um, all right. We have a picture actually of the Christmas card. Um, I love this imagery of the hot dogs going to see Santa. My question to you, as we head into you know, the new year, which of these hot dogs is the biggest liability heading into 2024? Mustard's always up to I, something. I, I think the, uh, I think the, the easy answer is mustard, right? Like he's, he's kind of very public with his, uh, his, his hijinks, his, his issues. But I think, uh, I think ketchup's kind of, kind of an underdog as far as trouble goes. Ooh, I was I was gonna if ask, you, you, didn't uh, mustard get sent down to the miners a couple of years ago? Yeah, he uh, he got to the point. It was maybe about halfway through the season, and he hadn't won a race yet. So um, you know, the the newspapers were calling him washed. Uh, people on social media were just like burying him, like cut this guy, cut this guy. Uh, luckily, he had he had some options left. So yeah, he got sent down to actually high A. He went right from the majors to high A. Um, wow, won, that's humbling. Won a, won a couple races. Yeah, won a couple races there and uh, got the call back to the bigs and, and kind of uh, picked up his stride. And one of the, the coolest things with them, too, is now they have a, a championship title belt, like a WWE style uh, belt that they, you know, hand out after each race. They pass it around. And I've gotten to, I've gotten to hold it. It's, it's one of those moments you don't forget holding the, the Guardian hot dog race winning belt. So. Um, again, a great uh, photo op. If you come across them and they have it, it's it's a wonderful, real piece of history. Wow. I was going to say, where did they even get that? Again, you know, Mustard and, and the crew, they're, they're crafty. They they have connections. They have their, you know, their, their gloved fingers in, in a lot of different uh, areas that they're, you know, getting belts or getting other props or, or whatnot. So you ne never count them. You know, you never know what's up their sleeves. 
They're sleeves. They're they're slimy hot dog sleeves. <laughs> um, guys, I've actually kept you on way longer than I originally had even planned on. So I love that you guys are such good sports, uh, staying on, chatting. I've truly, I've lost track of time. But uh, before you guys depart, you know, for the holidays and all that, and also from this podcast, is there anything y'all are trying to plug? I know um, Brian's selling some calendars. You've got a podcast. Uh, this is, this. the floor is yours, gentlemen. I mean, I have a, uh, a Guardians baseball history podcast. I record with uh, alumni during the season. I've been getting those out slowly but surely. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. We have our Guards Fest coming up next month. That's always a fun time to, uh, you know, be around fans, especially in January when it's cold and snowy in Cleveland. It's that real kickoff to um, our real build, you know, build up to spring training and, and regular season. And once that gets going and, you know, our home opener is the day of the eclipse, so that should be uh, oh. exciting. Yeah. yeah, so that's been the eclipse the, is like going you know, right through. Like you can see it really well from Cleveland, Cleveland, right? So Cleveland's gonna be a place wild. to be. Yeah, yeah, so that's exciting. Home opener is always exciting. Just the opening of a baseball season. You know, we're far enough out from the end of the season now. You start getting that itch that you you know you want to get back back into the swing of things. So. I <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, it's oh, and the ballpark's going to look really cool with all the, the renovations they're doing. So it's going to be you'll have to come back and, and see all the new uh, you know areas in the ballpark, and um, uh, it's going to be exciting. So that's that's what I'm plugging. What I'm excited about. I don't know what Beans is uh, amped for. <laughs> um, what yeah, I mean, meaty these, uh, things do you have for us? What? Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? I I don't know. It was a really bad transition. <laughs> Just plug something, please. Okay. Get take me out of okay. my misery. <laughs> Um, as Susie mentioned, so I do landscape photography. Um, I got some 2024 calendars, um, got a whole box I'm trying to get rid of at this point. And, you know, once the, the new year flips over, they kind of lose their, their value a little bit. So I'm trying to get rid of those, uh, as soon as possible. Susie tweeted out my, uh, and she, she tagged me in a post earlier. So if, I did. You, if, you, have, if you have interest, uh, my DMs are open. Um, the DMs so, uh, are open. I do want to say we've had most of our uh, our former interns have been blowing us up. So it just goes to show, you know, when you come to Cleveland, you, you make lifelong friends. I'm talking like interns from years ago. They're they're watching so high. All the other interns that are who are now in jobs, whether it's in baseball or or other sports or not in sports, but uh, you know, it's a it's we have a good group of people that uh, you know it's always fun to hear. So you know, Janet and, and the rest of the crew. It's uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, you know joining us on this this ride. Shout out to the interns. I, I think my favorite text I've gotten throughout this entire time of you know interns uh, chiming in is. Uh, one of one of our interns from last year who's who's working a job in baseball his name's uh, Jared said that uh when Jeremy was talking about our, our workplace culture he said Jeremy trying to explain the toxic workplace he's created uh, Jeremy really undersold um the, the environment he's he's kind of fostered and if you put both of us in the same room together um we can be a little uh little like the uh the old muppets um i don't know if you've ever seen the muppets but the two guys that yell from the balcony that's that's kind of like jeremy and i we, we like to have a little fun <laughs> just clarify too it's all vision. good we're all having good fun it's it's all good natured <laughs> no one call hr everyone's fine no, oh, jeremy, jeremy is so scared of that we all we all genuinely care about each other and it's uh yeah. it's it's like i said with the amount of the interns that keep messaging us, it's, uh, I like to think, you know, we're all good friends. Is it friendship? Is it Stockholm syndrome? We'll never know, but it's a lifelong connection nonetheless. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining the show. Um, and check your mailboxes for your gift bags. Um, uh, and make sure you order, listen to Jeremy's podcast, order some calendars from Brian, please. Uh, but gentlemen, happy holidays. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Suze. Bye. We all silly like the mayor. Live? Am I on? Yeah, bring me back. Bring me back. Guys, the show's not over. The show's not over. <laughs>
<laughs> we just we made an oopsies and played the the music. Okay. Anyway, guys, um, before like we're actually gone, y'all can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we're actually gone, we've got some incredible stuff. We're gonna dive into um. This Ben Verlander, Otani, Jackie Robinson drama happening on Twitter. I'm sure we'll have more info. Um, we'll see if the Rockies have any new transactions that we have to, you know, get into. But, of course, uh, the really exciting thing, Friday. Friday is when we're back, by the way. Friday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Josh Sushan of the Albuquerque Isotopes and other things. Uh, we'll be joining the show, making his triumphant return. It's been a while since we've caught up with him. So this will be a good one for sure. Um, all right. And Tiff, um, anything you want to plug? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> You're uh, like, uh, uh bye. <laughs> you didn't even say goodbye. Um, oh, we're good. We're good. Um, uh, Tiff, thank you as always for producing a great show. Thank you to Jeremy and Brian for taking the time uh, to deal with my annoying ass. I'm really disappointed they didn't curse at all. They like really talked up how many f bombs they were going to drop. Uh, yeah, that was chaos. That was was it not was so madness. chaotic? That was madness and chaos. Um, they're like I my a lot. Yeah. They're like my favorite people in baseball, they're so, honestly. They're, they're so like cool. hilarious. They they're have so a nice. great riff uh, going on. Um, and they're very welcoming, too, because when I went out to Cleveland, like I got to sit at their table. They're Aww. honestly, they're a click. They are a click. I got to sit at their lunch table, though, which was a huge deal. Cute. Adorable. I know. All the other Rockies beans. people were so jealous. <laughs> they were like, wow, like, wow, how did you get gotten, to sit there? We've not, never gotten to sit with Egghead and Beans before. <laughs> If they were like a freaking old school radio show, that would be their names. Egghead and Beans. Egghead that would be a beans. shock jock show where they like, yeah, <laughs> that would be a shock jock show for sure. Uh, guys, I mean, if you're still listening, I hope you uh, take that to one of the Cleveland radio stations and run with it, please. I would love that. But guys, tune in again Friday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. We're going to have the incredible Josh Sushan on the show uh, and we'll have some other, you know, fun things going on, too. But, Tiff, you know what I like to say about closing out a show? What do you like to always say before closing out a show? I always say I this. Remembered? Always say this. I always say, fuck it, we ball. Talk to you guys on Friday. Have a good day. We all silly like the mayor. 